the goal of today's video is to share with you how to import Microsoft Word or text-based tests that are multiple choice, true, false, fill in the blank, etc. that you already have, import them into Blackboard. In order to import tests and questions into Blackboard, it has to be converted into a format that Blackboard understands. If we don't convert the text, then we have to type all of the questions in manually. So a little work up front will save you a lot of work on the backside. Here is a sample test that I have in my Microsoft Word. I'm going to simply highlight all of the text, starting with the questions, because we can't use the title information in Blackboard. They only want the questions there. So I'm going to highlight my 10 questions that are currently in Word and then I can right click and copy or you can use control C if you are a keyboarder. Then I will push the Windows key plus R to bring up the run window and I'm going to type in notepad or alternatively you can hunt for it in the programs menu. Click OK. From here I can click edit and paste or right click and paste or control V whatever your mode of using cut and paste is. In order for us to get the document in shape for the conversion program to work properly, we need to format our test so that it can properly decode the answers from the questions. From end to end, once you get the technique down, it will only take you three to four minutes for every 10 questions that you have on a test. So keep that in mind when you see all these steps. Now that we have our test here in Notepad, we have to get rid of these tabs, all this space between things. So the first thing I do is I highlight, in this particular test, there was a little section out here for the student to write the answer and then a tab. I highlight from the first number of the question back to the beginning of that line and then I click Edit and Copy, or again, use your method of copy that you like to use. Then I go back to edit and replace. Here's a great tip within a tip because if you've never used find and replace that's available in almost any computer program, it's quite powerful. So now I'm going to paste in, I'll right click and paste in the information I highlighted. And don't get rid of these spaces because we want to get rid of those spaces up here in our document. So we're telling the program to find this information and replace it with a single space. So I just push the space bar one time on my keyboard. Then I'm going to come up here and, and click replace all. Watch behind what happens after I click replace all. Everything got replaced almost instantly. So now we want to get rid of these extra little tabs here between the number on the right side of the number and the question and also here in the answers because that was put in there by Microsoft Word. So again, I'm going to highlight that tab or that space, right click and copy it, go back to edit and replace. And then I've got a backspace out now, my previous information I told it to find. And then I'll paste in the new information and it looks blank to us because it's just space. And again, I'm going to come down here to replace what I want to replace it with a single space. So I'm just going to type that in, a single space, and again hit Replace All. And now you can see that the document looks pretty darn good. It's kind of nice. So next we're going to put in our answers. So the first two questions, as you remember, I told you were true-false. And for a true-false question, so I have to put a new line under my question, and then the letter A because that's the answer, and this one was true. And that's all I have to do. You just have to indicate whether it was true or false. You don't have to put both true and false. Now I'll come down here underneath the second question, do the same thing. And this one was false. So I'm just going to type in the word false. Now the next segment, I'm going to get rid of these instructions, multiple choice, because again, the conversion program will ignore that or, or might even create an error. So don't keep anything in your document other than your questions and answers. So now we're down to the multiple choice questions. Because of the way this was formatted in my particular Word document, I've got A, C, B, D here as my answers. So now I have to go into the C. I'm going to cut that out of there. So I've cut that with Control X. 
I'm going to come down to the D and push enter twice to create a space for C and then paste C back in there. So I have to do that for each question. Again, it seems like a little bit of work, but it comes in, it, it goes quite quickly. So I'm going to do that here again. I'm going to cut. This time I'll right click so you can see me do it. And then I'm going to come here to D, press enter twice to make space for C. Then I'll go into that space and paste in C. We'll do that again here on number three. Cut, go down to D, make the space, put it in there. Okay, so you got to do that to all of your questions. I'm not going to have you watch me do that. Then, and you can do it simultaneously if you want, but you do have to indicate what the answer is. So in number one, A is the answer. And the way the conversion program works, you need one space after the answer, then you type an asterisk. That indicates to our conversion program that that will be the answer to number one. In number two, C was the answer. Number three, D was the answer. So I'm just putting a space and then an asterisk and that's indicating what the answer is. I'm going to quickly finish my seven other questions and then I'll come back and show you the rest of the conversion process. Okay, I finished up the rest of my questions. So you can see they're all A, B, C, D and they have the, the space and then the asterisk where the answer is. You can see that throughout the document. And it doesn't matter if you have three or four or five, it doesn't matter how many answers are possible. As long as you format it in this particular format, it'll read it just fine for you. So once we've completed that, we're gonna to go to edit, select all, or you can do control A, if you know how to use control A, it was a keyboard shortcut, and then we're gonna copy it Again, use whatever your method is. Then once we've copied the text, we're going to go to the internet and you have to use Chrome for this particular website. It, it does not work in Firefox for some reason. And this is the address and I'll put this address in the description of this video. So now I'm going to click one time in this box and I'm going to right click and paste. So paste in that information that we just formatted and you can see it looks great there. We've got our true false. We have our asterisks, etc. Then we have to push generate. Once we've got the information in there, we want this little magic website to convert it to something Blackboard will understand. Type generate, it happens instantly, and you can see it puts in a lot of different things in here. See, it recognized this one as a true false, it recognized this one as a as a multiple choice. So you can see it converted. The text into something that Blackboard will understand. So now we have to download this particular file. Click your download button and finally we're going to go to Blackboard. So now I'm going to build a test and I'm going to call this Nervous System was mine. Chapter 6 that was the name of the test. I'm just going to leave it that way. You can put instructions if you want to. We'll submit it. We're going to upload the questions that the tool converted for us and we reformatted. So I'll click upload questions. It's going to ask where are the questions. I'll browse. There's my Blackboard test. Open it. I'm going to make all of them worth one point and submit. And it imported the 12 questions. And you can see it figured out the true false based on how we formatted that and it has all the other answers there as well. If you need to edit any of your questions you do the same thing you always do. You click next to the question and click edit and then you can go through and edit the questions you need to. One quick little bonus tip here is if, if you're not sure how to add a photo or an image to a question or a question's answer all you need to do is once you're in the editing mode is place your cursor underneath the question or above the question and right click and you'll see there is the option to add an image. So if I tap, click that, I can browse my computer. It shows you the preview of that image and I'm going to say insert it. And there it is. Now I have an image in my question. So I'm happy with the import. I'm going to click OK. And now I have a brand new test with 12 questions ready to be deployed or to even draw from to make new tests. I hope this helped you out. Good luck.